Okay, hi there. Welcome to a series of short videos on macroeconomics focusing on aggregate supply. In this revision video, we'll just spend a few minutes thinking about some of the key factors affecting aggregate supply for goods and services in the macro economy. So, first of all, what is aggregate supply? Well, aggregate supply is defined as the total planned quantity or volume of output of goods and services that businesses, all businesses within the economy, are both willing and able to supply, in other words, for supplies produce, at a given general price level at a given time, in a given time period. Short-run supply is basically a concept where we, we, we create artificially a time period and we think about the relationship between planned output, in this case GDP, and the general price level. The key point in our analysis is we're going to assume that productivity and cost of production and also the state of technology is essentially constant in the short run when we draw when we draw the short run aggregate supply curve. Now, a quick reminder that aggregate means total. So this is a key part of the macroeconomics course. We're thinking here of the total production of goods and services in the economy from a wide range of different industries. Uh, some of them are illustrated in this graphic. And don't forget that 80% of GDP in the UK, for example, comes from services, whereas only 11% flows from manufacturing. So aggregate supply means the total volume of goods and services produced within the, within the macroeconomic system. Uh, by the way, a significant minority of students use incorrect labelling on their diagrams in macroeconomics questions. It's really important that you label your ADAS diagrams with the general price level on the y-axis, rather than just simply price, as in micro, and with real GDP or real national output on the x-axis, rather than simply quantity in micro. Okay. But also, we use the letter Y for income as our shorthand label on the x-axis rather than the quantity cube. So the short run aggregate supply curve, uh, basically the, the, the curve is upward sloping, uh, in, indicating a positive relationship between the general price level and national output. The gradient of the short run aggregate supply curve depends on the extent to which there is spare capacity in the economy. So typically, for example, when unemployment is high, and capital is underutilized, then, then aggregate supply will tend to be elastic because there's plenty of spare productive capacity that can be brought into use when, when aggregate demand increases. Now, we normally say that a rise in the general price level, an increase in the general price level, is, uh, is a prompt stimulus for an expansion of short-run production in the economy. So this is built on the idea of the microeconomics you may well have come across in your theme one, that when demand is going up, uh, rising demand and prices stimulates an expansion of supply. It could be, for example, that there's an increased demand for care homes or people wanting to live in, uh, in sheltered accommodation. Uh, and demand and prices go up in that sector, and that brings about uh, an increase in investment, an increase in construction, for example. Producers are assumed, they are assumed, to respond to the profit motive when market demand is increasing and the general price level is rising from car making to construction to the oil and gas sector uh, in aggregate producers respond to higher demand so a rise in the general price level usually stimulates an expansion of short run aggregate supply as suppliers producers are responding to higher demand and prices equally uh, supply can contract. It's not always the case that countries expand and they grow. Sometimes, of course, they go into periods of recession where output is declining. So you can get a contraction of short run supply. And that's uh, usually the result of a fall in the general price level as producers cut back, particularly if there's been an inward shift of aggregate demand and prices are falling. A good example would be, for example, a fall in the price of milk might, might eventually lead to a contraction in the supply of milk, depending on the factors of obviously affecting it. But in aggregate, falling demand, falling prices is often a catalyst for supply to, to be cut back. 
So a fall in the general price level usually leads to a contraction of short run supply. Don't forget, when we draw the short run aggregate supply curve, we're making an assumption that the state of technology and that production costs and productivity are constant. Now, when they change, then the supply curve will shift position. So the short run aggregate supply curve, SRAS1 in this situation, will shift when there is a change in supply costs of firms throughout the economy. And uh, when focusing on shifts in aggregate supply, think cost. Focus on cost of production and in particular, the unit cost of getting goods and services to consumers across different markets. Uh, what we'll do uh, in the next video, we will look at shifts in supply, but very quickly, the short run aggregate supply curve will shift uh, when there's a change in cost. What, what, what we're illustrating here is an inward shift or a fall in short run aggregate supply. SRAS1 shifting inwards to SRAS2. There's less supply at each price level in the economy. And that typically as a result of an increase in cost, increase in cost of production. Equally, the supply curve can shift outwards, an increase or an outward shift in short run aggregate supply from SRS1 to SRS3, meaning that there's been a decrease in supply costs. The economy can now increase its output at given price level. More can be supplied at each general price level. OK, so that's an introduction to short run aggregate supply. In the next video, I've got some examples for you to look at, a little, some little quizzes about what causes the aggregate supply curve to shift in the short term. Okay, thank you.